Okay, hey guys, and welcome to a video with me, the Stonk Dad. We are doing another backtest video on the convergence tool. So what I'm going to be doing this week is I will show you guys the Monday through Friday, or sorry, Monday through Thursday, since we had a short week this last week. But I'll be showing you the Monday through Thursday market net flow data, and then the convergence tool, the convert, the I can't even talk, the convergence bars at the bottom. Uh, and then what we will do is we will backtest each of those convergence flips, whether it be green or red. And then we'll see how that trade does. Uh, it will make a little bit more sense once I get into it. So once we get to the charts, I can explain it a little bit more. Okay. Okay. So here is the market net flow tool. You guys are familiar with this, I hope. And if you are not familiar with the market net flow tool, please go back on some of my previous videos. And I talk about market net flow and convergence all the time on almost every single one of my videos. Um, so if you guys aren't familiar with that, again, please just go watch those. Um, but just a brief little uh, explanation of what it is, is it basically shows all of the calls and puts, all the flow data that comes in every single day, intraday. So this is um, Thursday's data. You can see that this green line was well above the red line. So the green line are calls and then the red line are puts. And then it averages out um, the buys and sells of calls and puts and then puts it on this chart really, really clean for us, okay? So uh, the bulls are in the lead here. You can see that calls um, have a very strong uh, momentum lead on that Thursday data, okay? And then you have the uh, convergence bars down here, which indicates strength of the price action relative to the flow data. So if price is moving up and there's strength in the market, you'll um, see uh, these green bars down at the bottom flip a certain color. Uh, and that just means that we're heading up in the market um, if flow is lining up with that, okay? So uh, it's the exact same if there are puts in the lead, if the red line are above the green line, uh, you'll see, and the market starts to head down, you'll see that the momentum, uh, the convergence bars start to turn red. Uh, and then we are in that uh, downward momentum phase, phase, okay? So let me go to the uh, Monday data. So if we flip on over to Monday the 25th, what we'll do is we always screenshot these so I can draw on them, and then it makes it a little bit easier for you guys to see what's going on here, okay? So um, right at market open, you could see that this green line um, was fairly bullish um, for the most part of the day. Um, you can see that it was well above the red line and then the red uh, put line was below zero. Um, so it did catch a couple decent trades here. Um, it looks like it caught almost at the bottom uh, at that um, 945 mark in the market. So we did have a small downward move, but then green convergence triggered and we got that nice move up to the upside from about 519.80. Uh, all the way up to 520.80 it looks like at the top there, um, which that was a really, really good trade. And then it followed up with a little bit of a smaller one, but it looks like at bottom there, you can see momentum started to fade, uh, fade in and we got that green convergence flip, which was a nice little win there from about 520.40 all the way up to that high uh, that we tapped earlier, that 520.80. So two good wins there um, for the most part. And then once you, we saw this consolidation happening, um, we did see calls drop there. You can see that green line dropped towards zero. And we had a big consolidation phase around the uh, lunchtime hour before we did get that small breakout. Um, but then puts were kind of coming up as well too, which indicated that that move to the upside was uh, short-lived. And then we had uh, that downward um, red convergence play there, which was a huge winner there. Looks like it caught it, not exactly at the top, but once we started to head down, you can see that uh, the price action started to go to the downside there. And I failed to mention that this white line here is the price of uh, the S&P 500 ETF SPY. So um, that's kind of why I, I can tell where price is moving because this is the intraday price action as well. So uh, let's see here. So let's look at these, um, these small ones here. So it looks like it did flip red for a brief time um, about there. Let me get out my ruler just so I can be pretty accurate on these price drops. 90 degree angle. So it looks like, oh, let me remove some of this. And then we'll go here. So it looks like it flipped 
right there. And then if I draw a straight line up, you can see where price is. So it did drop a little bit, but then came right back up. And then you can see that it flipped back gray around that area. Um, so we won't count that one. And then here it looks like it flipped for a brief amount of time. Um, it looks like maybe one loss on that green convergence, but then it flipped red. Um, it was just choppy nonetheless. So we will count that one as a loss. It looks like three wins and one loss. Three for four. Not bad. It did get a little uh, hairy there in the middle of the day, but you guys know that I don't like playing the middle of the day um, trades anyway. So that's Monday. Let's scroll on over to Tuesday. Tuesday. And then at the end of the, each video, guys, I always go back and then I uh, tally up to see what the win rate was. So if you guys are confused about um, all this, basically what I'm doing is I'm just back testing each conversion flip and then uh, seeing if it uh, would if it did turn out to be a winner or a loser and then I uh, tally them all up at the end. So here this is Tuesday's price action. You can see that um, calls and puts were both going up. So we did get a lot of great convergence. It's really, really hard to tell actually if it did flip, um, but we did have some uh, very choppy price action this week to say the least. But what we can do is we do see little flips here and there, um, like right here, one right there, and then there was another one here, and then there was another one here, it looks like. So it's really hard to tell. So it looks like there were three red flips. It did go down briefly, but I mean, it's too small to even tell and the price action wasn't even there. So you can't really count those as loser, losers or winners just because we consolidated so much during this day. So, I mean, you could have gotten out um, with a small win, I feel like, maybe one of these three. So I probably will just count one of them and then watch the rest of them. Um, just because price action was so, so uh, slim there. Uh, but you definitely you could have made out green on uh, at least one of these small ones here. And then obviously this one here was a clear winner. So uh, I'm not going to count this one as any losses just because the price action was so close together. So you probably wouldn't have lost anything even if you did get into one of those. So that one was a two for two day. Um, and then let's go to Wednesday. Okay, so the flow was uh, somewhat similar for the most part. Lots of uh, changes in premiums with calls and puts flipping, um, as you can tell here. But you can see exactly where they do flip a little bit better on this one. Um, it was like this for most of the week, guys. So um, it was a little bit more difficult than it was in previous weeks. Um, but nonetheless, it did catch some very good ones, uh, maybe small ones. But still, here's some good ones here, actually. Uh, let me just write all these. Looks like it did get do pretty good actually, surprisingly. Looks like almost all these were winners. Okay, so there's my lines of all the flips. So you can see it flipped green there. Um, you can, indicated by this green line here, and then green here, and green here. This one was probably going to be a loser because it did trend down for a little bit. Um, but then it made it right back <laughs> with that one. And then obviously with this one too and this one. So it looks like one, two, this was, was a win. One, two, three, four, five out of six convergence flips uh, for wins. I'd call that a very good day. Um, even if it wasn't for a small win there. So five out of six on that day. Um, and then Thursday. Thursday was a decent day. Um, we waited all day for a big move up just because flow was super bullish. Uh, so I was waiting for that upside move. This is as fresh as it was in my mind, even though it is Saturday, but I do remember this one quite vividly. And um, we did get a lot of uh, green conversion slips actually, which did it did make it a little bit harder because we did get that consolidation like we had been on lower volume because of the shorter week. Um, but it looks like it did catch a couple pretty good ones, um, small ones, but still good ones. There they are. That one is probably going to be our loser right there. And then here, maybe that one's a loser. This one here, oops. And then this one here, lots of flips guys. <laughs> 
that one was a little bit iffy, um, but this one obviously was the big one we were looking for. Okay, so lots of flips. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine green conversions flips on the day. It looks like one win there, two wins there, three wins there. This one was going to be a loss. This one was a little bit, eh. Let's see where this one ended up, actually. Where did that one flip gray? Okay, yeah, that one's going to be a loss. Loss there. And then this one, probably going to be a loss. This one was a win. This one was a win. And then this one was a win, too. Okay, so three losses and six wins. Yep. Six, six out of eight. One, two, three. Four, five, six. Yep. Six out of, oh, sorry, six out of nine. Six out of nine. Okay. So we're going to tally all these up. I know that's kind of boring for you guys to look as I back test all those, but um, all these convergence trades, it has about an 80% win rate. Um, as long as you trade uh, on good flow days like this, you can catch some really, really nice moves. Um, and I've noticed that the best times to trade are either in the morning time, uh, never during lunch. So that 9 a.m. to about 11 a.m. Uh, Pacific time, which is my time, is when I try to lay off um, price action because you can see that a lot of those losses came in uh, towards the middle of the day and not more so towards the morning or the uh, afternoon session. Um, so if you can definitely increase that win rate if you trade really good momentum trades with the uh, high flow premium. Um, and the divergence is what I mean. So if uh, one side is showing more bullish than the other, if the green line is well above the red line or vice versa, if the red line is above the green line, um, you can catch some really good trades, okay? So let's um, tally up all these trades here. So we had 15, 17, 21 total trades out of five, 10, 16 wins. So we went 16 for 21, which is not bad, five losers, 16 divided by 21. So that's pretty much spot on. I know you guys can't see it really well, but we had a 76% win rate last week. I feel like that's pretty good because uh, we had a lot of low volume and then consolidation throughout the week. Um, and I've been doing pretty good with my futures trading as well, doing this. Um, and I've definitely increased my win rate um, if I do certain, if I factor in a couple of other things, which I do talk about in the previous videos. Um, but nonetheless, I've been maintaining above 85% win rate or more uh, on my futures trades, which has been phenomenal. Uh, I usually, I can get anywhere from 90 to 100%, and my 100% trades are just my one and dones or, or two and done trades for the day on futures. So I've been really enjoying futures lately using this strategy. Uh, and I definitely suggest doing that as well. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Um, another successful convergence week. Um, good vibes going into this next week. Hope you guys have an awesome Easter and I'll see you in the next one.